All right. What do you do, KTTV? We are back. And on tonight's episode, we have the man, the myth, the legend, superintendent himself, Dr. Anthony Mays, A Leaf ISD. How you doing tonight, Dr. May? I'm good. How are you doing tonight? Hey, man, it is summertime. Uh, we are getting ready to get this thing back going, yeah. uh, back to school. I am excited. Uh, you know, second year, uh, Ms. Lewis in the building. So I I'm looking forward to, uh, yeah, man, new beginnings. Uh, I think by the third year, third time around, uh, hey, man, you only figure out now how to innovate because you've been in, you've been inside and you say you say the, the behaviors and all of those pieces we, we got that now so now let's see how do we go i'm excited about the uh the staff that's hired for this year i'm ready to roll man mm -hmm. yeah I yes sir yes sir little, uh, i mean y'all have one vacancy which for the alternative learning center man that's pretty fantastic you know what i'm saying so yeah. and, and it wasn't a teaching position if i was mistaken of course i know y'all had the loss over there but you know again yeah. to have that sure. um given you know the climate and given the population that you all sir man that's pretty fantastic yeah 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 it's yeah. um i'll tell you <laughs> we we humped uh before we got it done but but the the thing is man i say it's such a blessing because the people that come through there you know after doing this for so long you kind of get that knack for the people who are built for it but also who have a passion mm -hmm. for it. And so being able to grab those people, kind of put them in place, yeah, sky's the limit, sky's mm -hmm. the limit. <laughs> so man, as yep. we jump into tonight, um, you know, just, just saying welcome back to school. I know we got a lot of things mm -hmm. that's coming up for this school year. So I wanted to kind of talk about some of those pieces, kind of touch on a few of them. But before we do that, I want to check in on you, Dr. Mays, man. How have you been doing uh, as we roll through the school mm -hmm. year and also for this summer, man? How you, how you been feeling, brother? Yeah. So I feel blessed uh, more than anything. I, I was talking to Dr. Price today about that, just really trying to soak up every moment of, man, just this leadership ride. You know, my daughter turned 15 yesterday. Uh, and so it was it's a surreal moment, right? Just kind of watching them grow and change. And of course, you know, she's here in an a league school, but just watching her evolve. And for me as a dad, that's, that's, you know, that's exciting, you know? So like you said, no, I don't get all of the, the, the breaks and the vacations that, you know, some of us may be able to take advantage of, but, you know, just being present and being in the moment is, is reinvigorating in itself sometimes. So I feel mm -hmm. good, man. You know, I feel good. You know, you're trying to take care of yourself, but I, I feel good. I'm happy to, you know, continue to be a part of the A-Leaf team and I'm excited about what's to come. Yeah, now last year, if I'm not mistaken, that was the first full year. Yeah, that was the first full yeah. year, man. First Dang, full year okay. working, working through all the, uh, all the ups and downs and all the ebbs and flows yeah. of, a, of a school year. Yes, now now just, just being able to have this conversation with somebody going through uh, that first year of leading this big district, you know, every time mm -hmm. you look, it's, you're on the news, you got things going. Mm -hmm. What were at least one or two of those key challenges and successes that you experienced throughout that first year? Yeah, you know, that the, the key challenge uh, for me continues to be our budget, right? Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, again, and, and, it's, and that's the state of things, not just here in AD, but all over the state of Texas, you know, you couple, you know, the it's the budget with declining enrollment and, you know, folks going to charter schools, folks going to home schools, um, you know, and that's that's a that's less money for our system. So I think that's that's going to continue to be the challenge for a while. And I keep telling people that, you know, we present on a budget every month to the board and not because we have to, but because I want to keep the budget in front of everybody so people uh, can go through this with us. Right. Um, that continues to be one of the biggest challenges. Um, you know, of course, you know, I think for us completing a first, uh, like a full year, man, it was like seeing all of the, the planning work come to fruition. And, and when I talk about stuff like that, I'm talking about like stuff like the taste of A-Leaf, uh, and being able to, to go out there and be with the community and see how good the community felt about being able to celebrate the diversity, 
uh, that that we have right here in A-League. So I'm looking forward to stuff like that growing uh, from year to year and people taking more advantage of it and us just all being together and having a good time. Yeah, man, that that takes the bay leap. It was, uh, you know, being the host, it, it was a few times. I was like, oh, okay, we, <laughs> it's close right here. But they would pull it out and everything would come out clean and un- unscathed. And so, um, yeah, that, that was such an awesome experience. You know, you think about all the planning that we did in the back end, having those meetings, Zoom meetings, until finally that day when everything just come into play, uh, the fashion show. So, so much, so much going on, man. Uh, that, that was awesome, yeah. brother. And if you say uh, one success, like you said, that, that was the A-Leaf show. Uh, and I agree mm-hmm. with that, man. But I would say one, another success, man, was just, for me, watching you be, uh, you know, so visible, man, I know in and out, day in and day out, it was always new challenges, always something. Like Murphy's Law was in full effect, I'm pretty sure. But to see how you was able to move, yes, man, and, and you, regardless of what was going on, you could not tell because when you were there on the campus, it feels like regardless of whether it was on, on social media or it was in person, you were in the moment, right? And so so regardless of what's yes, outside sir. of you, man, so I would say, man, thank you. Uh, for just just having that model well of us to be able to see another black brother man run it like that yeah now man again we have great people here in a leaf you know shout out to yeah. chancellor terry for you know picking up that lift and, and being able to sit down and just collaborate with people that's like-minded and, and want to see great things happen here in a leaf uh because like you said man y'all doing the zoom meetings y'all pulling in the student groups. Y'all got, you know, people out here going to do outreach. You know, I get a chance, of course, to talk about the vision of it, but you all go out there and execute, man. And, and then, like you said, the day is so special because you got all these different nationalities represented right here in this part of Houston to come out there and just do their thing and show you, like, this is what we're about, whether it's food, whether it's dance, whether it's song, like, this is our culture, this is us, let's celebrate. Most definitely. And um, as we talk about that culture, we know the importance of building that positive school culture, uh, campus culture, uh, just out through the district. And so are you taking any new steps uh, this year to ensure that uh, we remain or even become more supportive and inclusive for both the students and the staff? Yeah. So I think that, you know, that's one of those things that's, that's ongoing, right? Like you never just arrive at the place. Uh, I think that it it continues for me to always be about leadership, right? So whether it's me or a campus principal, we just talked about it with uh, Principal Lewis over there uh, doing what y'all doing at ALC, which again is phenomenal to not have a high level of turnover given the challenges that I know y'all see every day. Like that speaks to the culture, right? Uh, So it's, it's about you know, and I'm not in the building with, with Principal Lewis every day, but, you know, I imagine how she moves through that building and how she interacts with you all, how she engages you all, how she engages parents, how she engages students. And so it's it's about having that at every, cor- you know, every corner of A-League. So every campus got to have that type of leadership. Uh, every department got to have that type of leadership. Well, we're just taking care of one another uh, and making sure that we listen to one another. And that we're taking, you know, some of the ideas that come organically from just sitting down and collaborating and making, yeah. uh, whether it's the respective department or the respective campus or a leaf as a whole, just the best place that it can be. Yeah, most you know, definitely. That's gonna um, that's, that's you know, the process is just gonna keep taking place. Yeah, and, and with that, um, and when you think about putting those people in place, I know uh, last episode we talked a little bit about mentorship and the importance of those type of initiatives and programs. Uh, since then, uh, have you all looked at any new uh, initiatives or mentorship programs that y'all will be rolling out this year for either leaders or teacher leaders, anything special? Yeah. So of course we have uh, our, one, we have our, our, AP and principal pipeline, right? So that that is something that's that's already existing. Uh, for us, we started with Engage to Learn this past year. And when I say Engage to Learn, it's really about, like you say, coaching. It's like, you know, not everybody, positionally, you don't have to be a principal or an executive level coach to be able to provide uh, a framework for helping somebody accomplish their goals. So the 
the, the engage the engage program allows for all of us to be able to sit down and have somebody that serves like an accountability partner, right? So different people are in that program. We saw a lot of people benefit from those programs last year. We saw uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Sergio uh, Lopez, David Lopez, over at uh, yeah. A-League Middle School, really uh, take that by the horns uh, and do well with it. And it really is just like me sitting down with you talking about what are your goals and then me checking back in with you and saying, okay, how are you moving with those goals? Are you being successful with those goals? And when you're off track saying, hey, you're off track, let's talk about some suggestions as to or some ideas as to how you get back on track with your personal goals. So Mr. Lopez is going to be leading that uh, that that push for us here in A-Leaf. And so he participated in last year uh, and he's yeah. going to be driving it this year. And so uh, that's really just about continuing to have people be reflective uh, and, monitor, you know, monitor themselves. So if you've got a goal, uh, don't just write the goal down and then walk away from it. Write the goal down and put some strategies in place. Work with whoever your uh, identified coach is and continue to watch your progress. And when you're not making progress, challenge yourself to talk about, okay, what do I need to do to get back on track? So that's that's one of the programs. Uh, I think that our clergy with the campus, even though we're not talking about a individual mentor for, like, say, a person, I think that the interaction, uh, the cross-section between some of the individuals that come from our churches that come onto our campuses, they work to support principals and campuses around the culture. Like some of those organic relationships that are built just from just fellowshipping uh, helps to, to be able to bring about change too, right? Uh, now that's a less formal way than what we just talked about, but I think it's still something to be said about these uh, church communities that are joining our campus communities in an effort to serve but again, yeah. you had this organic spinoff from just us being able to spend time with each other. Mm, yeah, man. All about that community. Uh, I was in the uh, Engage and uh, Lopez was my mentor. And so when I tell oh, you, man. it was... Um, <laughs> look, That's cool. I did not well, know that. It came down to uh, racking our brains on just the goal. So so we, we're working outside of the non-traditional, right? So being able to just come in and say, okay, well, what do I want the goal to be? And how can I do this? And, so we end up doing a lot with the uh, best practices boot camp and just getting uh, my goal was just kind of really just setting up those pieces. So I worked with like Holland uh, for the camp. She came over to ALC, gave me a lot. And so we went through each week, man. So so I, I definitely say uh, just seeing him grow in that program. He's definitely the person, man. So y'all y'all right on point right there. That's cool. That's cool. I did yeah. not know that was your coach, but I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And I'm glad to hear you, you recognize or for me with the program and we're able to take advantage of it. Cause you know, my thing is, man, even in the role that I'm in now, you gotta have these thought partners that kind of, okay, how's this going? Okay, let's talk, let's revisit this. You know, you gotta have somebody that participates in that process with you. Uh, Cause it, it helps you continue to, to improve, right? You know, and continuous improvement is a philosophy that I always personally try to operate with, but, but just having that thought partner that knows what you're trying to do is helpful. Most definitely, most definitely. Uh, it was it was so many weeks uh, to where I would I would get stumped, and I said, "Well, ah, uh, man, we got this going on, or it's just so much." And so he just tell me, "Okay, well, let's step back, you know." And so let's mm -hmm. you don't have to go from zero to one hundred. Let's go zero to twenty five, zero to fifty, as long as we moving forward. And so a lot of that was, yeah. and, and it was fun watching him being coached while he was coaching me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man. Now, nah, man. It's a good domino effect, you know what I'm saying? And we all get yeah. better from yeah. it. What they say, feedback, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Yeah. So now as we begin the new academic year, um, you know, so much uh, schools just dropped. Uh, we got a lot of new leadership mm -hmm. in place. Um, as we look mm -hmm. at those, that plan for this year, what are some primary goals and priorities that you set for the schools and the staff? Yeah. So, you know, we just pretty much finalized our strategic plan, right? We went through all of that, that last year of gathering feedback from our community, gathering feedback from principals, gathering feedback from students. And so we landed on our five pillars. And so our five pillars are student achievement, world-class employment, safe and secure A-LEAF, organizational strength, and A-LEAF community. And I know you've seen us, you've seen the strategies kind of unfold with, with, with most of those, right? So. If we talk about organizational strength, 
Right now, you know, we have our budgetary challenges. So we're having these conversations with our board uh, about a possible uh, VA TRE. Uh, we're having conversations with staff about a VA TRE and supporting it. Now, the board hasn't voted on it, but we know that this will bring additional revenue into a leaf ISD for us to be able to support teachers, you know, or support uh, raises or support meeting the needs of the system. So those are things that uh, help us with the organizational health. But safe and secure a leaf is something that, again, you see us, we added those. Well, you may not see it, but on the high school campuses, we added those additional uh, patrols in the parking lot. You know, we added that extra staff to be able to make sure that the needs met. You see our police officers, uh riding around with some some cars some new vehicles we want them to be in reliable vehicles so when we do have challenges or issues they can get from one emergency to another easily so you know we're trying to make sure that we take care of things uh you all have i don't know if you've already gotten it but uh your new emergency buzzer that allows people to you know wherever you are in the building to be able to alert and say hey we got an issue here uh, and that, you know, people uh, that are there to help support you and keep you safe know that, hey, we need to get over to that campus immediately. And everybody will have one of those. So within each one of those pillars, uh, we have a lot of different strategies that we're working. Student achievement, of course, man, first and foremost. Um, and so that's that's just work that's ongoing. We know that we got to continue to make sure that our students are getting exposed to rigorous learning opportunities in the class. And so you know you've probably been a part of that work uh but we got people all over the district that are like super intelligent that are also engaged in their work and we're gonna keep rolling that ball up the hill yeah most definitely man i think about uh you know big shouts out to uh a lot of my friends from hicks um who just got picked mm -hmm. up uh this year um uh instructional beast man so I'm really looking forward to the school year that they're coming through uh, with, with, between Maturo and Jones and uh, Morgan mm -hmm. and all those people who are, are coming in. And so, uh, man, we, we was we was a tight band over there at Hicks. And so I know uh, that they can move the needle. So looking forward to that as we do keep that academic uh, importance uh, at the forefront, man. And so what I was thinking about when you was talking about those, those pillars and, and just being out was the MVP award. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. when we talked about that that award mm -hmm. and, and you would pull up on people, what were some of those mm -hmm. reactions that you got, man? And what as your as your first year coming in, what brought that award on to say I'm gonna go out and do this myself versus delegating? And what's coming up for the new year? Any any new awards that they're looking for? You're just gonna keep that one going strong. No, the, you know, the MVP award, we're gonna keep it going strong that we're uh we're uh, going to, of course, change our package because it's like, I think, you know, we, we came in with one iteration and, and you know, we, we ended up, of course, strengthening what we what we had. And we're going to, like I say, continuous improvement is what we always try to do. So we're going to try to improve uh, the MVP recognition for uh, each person. But, you know, the ideal conceptually, and we talked about it, it's like, hey, you want people to feel special. You know, you want people to feel celebrated. And you want people to feel recognized and man it, it was always cool for me because man the people wouldn't have any idea that they were being recognized so of course you know a lot you know sometimes tears and snot bubbles you know what i'm saying so because <laughs> of their colleague wanting to lift them up and celebrate them and them not knowing how much people around them value them which again we want to make sure that man everybody across every organization uh is recognizing individuals within their their team uh, just to lift them up, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, man, that that pat on the back is better than a dollar, you know. But it's like we need to we need to be able to pass those out wherever we can go. So we're gonna keep doing it, man. We're gonna keep on doing that MVP. Yeah, and, and so that that's that's the um, and so just thinking about the importance of the academic push that's going on, uh, how we celebrate because that I believe that is the biggest piece. Um, to that small turnover for us, it's like those peaks and valleys, right? So uh, when it's high, right, we celebrate, but we remind the people at the same time, it gets low. So we want you to enjoy it, yeah. enjoy it. And then when it's time to dig in, uh, we do dig in. So with that going, I know we got the, um, I know they've been doing like a lot of the specialist camps, uh, getting ready for mm -hmm. the lesson plan, everything that's rolling out. Uh, have you been able to kind of peek mm -hmm. in on those meetings? And, and what are your thoughts 
on uh, kind of turning that new page and having specialists uh, doing, a, a, I guess, a different role in a sense? Yeah. Well, I mean, you are you are all up in the know, huh? So um, hey. the, the specialist. <laughs> so the, the specialist is a critical role, you know, uh, and, and, you know, my my point, whether we're talking about specialists or coordinators on the curriculum side, you know, we recognize that, man, we got to make sure that we get stronger with that piece, because I mean, that is, you know, one of the primary linchpins when we talk about growing capacity of associate teachers or going, growing capacity of different uh, content teams. And so I, I tell I told the specialists, even as we said and we met, you know, because they were all worried about specialists leaving. And I said, no, we the specialist is a good thing. We want to maintain it, but we got to make sure that we're getting an ROI. You know, that return on investment is something that we, we're talking about with everything. So if we're going to invest in specialists, we need to make sure that our specialists are getting, you know, the training that they need, make sure that our coordinators are providing the guidance and support that they need for specialists so that you know those specialists can go in and take care of teachers so then teachers can take care of all of the students uh and so that's what we're focused on this year that's been part of the feedback as we've talked to uh principals as we've talked to our executive team i think everybody recognizes that uh there's room to grow uh on this curricular side uh and supports that we need to have in place and so man we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we're doing that yeah yeah and, and i was looking at uh i went to a training and uh we were talking about uh you know so let's say the specialists they're doing a lot of work with the lesson plan and uh i remember at one point it was like okay well let's let's plan uh, and everybody come with their pieces and you just take it and you never really look at it until it's time right and so uh, okay that gets us nowhere uh but it was an internalization mm -hmm. process of that lesson plan that i was able to see and I said, I think this was it. Uh, you know, as, as everything, you got to kind of pull it out, kind of work through it. But uh, I, I believe that that internalization plan is what's needed to kind of bridge that gap from us meeting for that one hour to that special delivery that it's going to take to really move the needle of those students in the classroom, man. So uh, I agree. I agree, man. On with it up with that work, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like you say, we never arrive, man. It's It's going to always be something, right? And I think to, to your point, it's just recognizing that you're going to have peaks and you're going to have valleys. That's the work, right? So like you said, we, when we're in that peak, we get it out the mud and we do what we need to do to move on uh, and get to the next, you know what I'm saying? The, when we get out that valley, do what we need to do and get to the next peak by working hard, you know, and that's that's the cycle, right? It's a continuous cycle. We're going we're gonna to have our valleys. We're going to have our peaks. Yeah. Now, another big piece of that budget is – uh. You know, as, as we move in, uh, I was looking at a district the other day and they say, well, we, we got so many new computers coming in. We just move into one to one tech and all of those pieces. Uh, and, and for us, I know that has always been at the forefront of the district. Uh, so as we look this year coming up, are there any innovative practices or technologies uh, that we got integrated for school operations or curriculum this year that you noticed? Not so much with, with, with school operations. Like I said, it's, it's the bigger push and thrust has been on the safety, right? The technology on the school safety yeah. side. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think for us, it, it's continuing to make sure that we got good, strong systems uh, mm -hmm. for, you know, our one-to-one -one opportunities because we have computers to offer one-to-one. -one. Like we pay for insurance for students to have computers. So we need to make sure that uh, we're leveraging um, what we have, right? Uh, because yeah. there is an opportunity for students to have a device uh, and, you know, I hate when I walk in the classrooms and I see students using phones when I know that we've made the investment in computers for those students. Mm. Um, so just trying to figure out what systems need to be cleaned up so that every student that walks into those buildings can get the opportunity to get the, the necessary technology uh, to leverage it and go out there and, and do what they need to do academically. Yeah, most definitely got to get that technology. I was looking at a few schools. And so um, everybody, I remember one time it was a uh, BYD crazy, right? And then uh, people started doing too much on the telephone. So then they start pulling it back. And so now I was looking at a few schools said, well, yeah. we're going to have students drop them at the door. You know, yeah. and so um, ha have we thought about something like that? Or, or I, I know for us, look, we don't have that problem. We, we just but uh, on main right. campuses, yeah. how is that, that working for this year? Yeah. 
So, you know, it's one of those things Dr. Creer and I have been talking about it and, and keeping an eye on it uh, and monitoring it. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, you, like you said, it's not an issue on your campus. So I would ask you, why is it not an issue on your campus? Because it's not there. Why not? Um, hey, because it's uh, part of that rule, uh, part, of the, uh, part of the rules where we, we, we got to keep everything streamlined. Yeah, you know, but it's 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 the campus process, right? You know, and I think that those are opportunities for can we give campuses opportunities to, you know, decide what's working for them, right? Versus this blanket rule, right? Now, if, if it's if it's a problem for you at your campus, then you know you need to be able to sit with your campus leaders, sit with your community, and determine, hey, what's the best possible solution? You know, before we make a, a broad sweeping gesture. It's like, hey, let me give every leader the opportunity to figure out what's working best for their campuses, right? Because you got some campuses, I, I'll take it. Let's say you got uh, a cur or a leave early. You know, we make this broad sweeping rule when I walk into these campuses, students are using these devices for work, right? I can see some of that in Elsa too, right? Uh, I can see some of this in other campuses too, depending on what classrooms you go to where people are productively using technology. Uh, yeah. So to make a broad sweeping rule that would impact or adversely, you know, limit the opportunity for those learning opportunities to take place, you know, I, I don't know that that's the best way to, to approach it, right? Now, again, if a campus yeah. uh, sees and says that this is problematic for my campus, then we'll, we'll have that conversation and we'll figure yeah. out how we can support uh, those respective campuses. But, I mean, you got some campuses that, that use technology every day and they use it in a good way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, definitely. Yeah, I um now as we as we get ready to start landing this plane, one of the pieces is self-care. And I don't know if we talked a little bit about this tonight, but uh top down, right? I, I think that that is so important, right? As we take care of people, as we celebrate people. Uh this year, how have you uh become intentional more about uh encouraging their self-care uh between yourself? Mm -hmm and the staff. Yeah. So uh, walking spree, which was, you know, me and Katina Gordon, you know, we always having these conversations about how we can change behaviors and make people, like you say, take better care of themselves. So walking spree was a part of that. You know, we're having conversations now about, um, you know, a, a, a company barbecue that we want to be able to, to, to host, you know, just to, and this is about environment, right? You know, just yeah. bringing us together again, making sure that we understand that, man, we value everybody, right? We value one another, you know? And so, you know, those are things that, that we want to do environmentally, you know, the taste of a leaf for as, as, as much as we had it our first run, that's a, that's another piece of it, right? It's, it's creating a mm -hmm. sense of community where we can take yeah. care of one another. And, and again, we, we want, keep building on those opportunities right because what a leaf uh you know uh the a leaf the a leaf uh proud was or you know the a leaf uh the taste of a leaf was like those are things like those are starting points right but but we know that there's so much opportunity for these to grow like we know that while we may have had over a thousand people at these events guess what Man, we got thousands of other folks in the district that need to come out there and take advantage of those opportunities just to commune with one another. And uh, again, just fellowship and take care of one another. But from the top down, I try to I try to promote and push those opportunities for for us uh, just to be engaged with one another. Um, I know that that's not you know me giving somebody a trip to to Bermuda, or uh, me giving somebody you know uh, more days of vacation, or me giving somebody a bag of money. But sometimes again just connecting with one another can be healthy, especially as we come out of COVID, you know, reconnecting with one another is, is, is critical when we talk about some of the challenges that folks have around mental health. Um, sometimes it, it, a good conversation, a good sit down over, you know, a plate of food, uh, a good, you know, a good, just this opportunity just to talk with somebody about whatever you may be going through and hear whatever they may have gone through so they can share, hey, this is how I manage that. Man, sometimes that goes a long way, and I, and I believe in those opportunities. So I try to make sure we create opportunities for that to happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's like uh, this weekend I'll be going down to Franklin 
um, uh, for mm-hmm. one of my old professors, Dr. Mackey. So there'll be a few things going on in his ranch. Uh, but but just people getting mm-hmm. together, right? Um, yeah, to, to to just do that communion and, and, and talking to each other. I was talking to some uh, mm-hmm. people from uh, Waco ISD uh, who will be coming down there with mm-hmm. me. And so, yeah, man, I think this is going to be a wang dang doodle, but it's what's needed, especially as we get ready to get started. Yeah, man, there's something to be said about just getting together, you know, and doing nothing or getting together and, and yeah. <laughs> eating some food, you know. Um, yeah. Again, it don't have to always be something that's got us moving at 100 miles per hour. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. it can be something that just slows us down a little bit um, because sometimes the slowdown is what we need. So, again, for us as a team, we're going to continue to work to create opportunities uh, for employees of A-Leaf to be able to come together and just slow slow stuff down a little bit. Uh, and commune with one another and continue to work on building this A Leaf community. Yeah. And now, as we get ready for this mm-hmm. school year, my God, 24 25. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are your hopes and expectations for this academic year? Or, or either we kind of covered that. So if you had anything to put in on top of that, but what message would you like to share with the fellow educators as we embark on this yeah. 24, 25 journey from the super 10? Yeah. So one, just piggybacking off of kind of what we just said, take care of yourselves, take care of one another. Um, you know, education is hard work. Um, you know, but people have been doing it for years. Right. And so um, we ain't got to uh, harm ourselves. Uh, because we can't find balance, right? Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. we know that there are kids relying on us uh, to support their future opportunities. Uh, and in that instance, we got a lot of work to do, right? We got a lot of work to do. When we think about uh, 35% of our kids reading on grade level uh, at the third grade, um, we want to make sure that those students get a chance to grow in their ability to read, right? When we look at students that are in the juvenile justice system, uh, 85% of those students are functionally fu- functionally, functionally illiterate, right? So we know it's something to be said about what we can do for a student that can learn how to read in our schools. Like we can get them out of the criminal justice system, right? Uh, we, can, we can break cycles of poverty. Uh, we can create an opportunity for them to to go out there and have a good life for themselves. So, you know, again, take care of yourselves, take care of one another, but we got to keep the main thing, the main thing. And we want to make sure that we move the needle uh, when we talk about the students that are in our system uh, that are able to read and able to uh, conduct numeracy uh, and just be able to go out there and take some of the skills that we know that we can impart on them within our school system out into the world. Uh, I always try to bring it back to the fact that Man, one day all of us gonna be old one day. Uh, and these young kids uh, and students that we're supporting in these classrooms are gonna be our mm. caretakers and our leaders uh, and our policy makers. Uh, and they're gonna be running this world and this country, right? So when we think about that day, you know, what do we need to get them today to make sure that, that they are well prepared to serve us and serve us well? Because, you know, one day we ain't going to all be able about it like we are now. <laughs> and we're going to have to be relying on these, uh, our students and these kids uh, to, to keep us all moving. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, with that, whew, you know, I, the sad part is I've, um, this summer, just since we've been out, I've ridden two, two of the former students, right, uh, in prison. You know, and so, but it's just like how, what, what happens to, uh, to, to save those students before they get to this point where I don't have to write those letters, you know, just talking about what's going on. Yeah. And so most definitely, man, like you say, keeping that main thing, the main thing and, and people, I don't know if they take it lightly, but, but that charge is just that big. Like this is the person that's going to mm-hmm. be taking care of you, making rules for your life and your money <laughs> when yeah. you get, when you get old. So yeah. it's just that important, man. Yeah. Yeah. And if we don't get them, if we don't put uh, good, rigorous text in front of them and teach them how to analyze one thing from another, if we don't, you know, give them opportunities to to collaborate uh, and work and plan and develop and, and create together, uh, 
if we don't get them the social skills uh, from the design of the, you know, the work that we do in the classroom, then, you know, same on us when we, when we see them out there and they've moved on to the next phase of their life and they had struggles, right? Like we're the ones that can set them up for our success. Like the fact that 85% of these students within the juvenile justice, justice system are again, functional, functionally illiterate is something that I don't even think we got to guess and try to figure out like, man, if we taught them how to read, would it make a, would it make a difference? You know, if we if we gave them a few more tools, how different would that kid's life be or that student's life be? Yeah. So it's a lot of stuff that we we definitely have control of, and I think that's the power in us being educators. Uh, that's the power in us sitting in these leadership roles uh, is that we can alter the future. Like we can definitely alter the future with what it is that we do right now. So the more opportunities that we put in front of our students in terms of summer fest, I, I, you know, I said I went to the Young Innovators Camp today, which was a new thing that we kicked out. Shout out to Dr. Queer, uh, Pam Lowe and our instructional team, uh, just for again taking the charge. You know, you have these little kids walking around with a white lab coats on. They got their little <laughs> doctor such and such. We have, you know, you had doctor this, and they had created, uh, you know, robots. They had created roller coasters. And man, they were just proud of themselves, right? Um, and I think about what that does for a kid's mental model themselves, uh, and and what it does for them in terms of the, their thoughts around the possibility of what they can do in the future. But again, we're responsible for the design component of that, so we got to make sure that we're creating more and more opportunities to to crack open those opportunities within the mind of our students. Uh, that's what we're responsible for doing. That's the power again of us being educators and being in these seats of leadership. And I embrace it wholeheartedly. And I'm excited about creating more opportunities for students. I'm excited about more of our students being able to read. We want to get above and beyond that 35%. You know, our, and our strategic goals, our strategic plan, the goal is to get from that 35% to 40, right there at uh, 48%. Mm, that's know, we know. Oh, yeah, we can do it. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. Like you say, one team, one go. Everybody, let's, let's, let's get on board and, and move regardless of, of where you at. You know, everybody got a role to play in this thing. And so I think if everybody stay in that lane and keep it rolling, uh, we'll all meet up on the promise land. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, well, I think that'll do it for us, Doc. Uh, I appreciate you once again taking some time out. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the 24-25 school year uh, and, and the leadership that you have going. Uh, let's keep it rolling. Today is a holiday, so I want to say happy June 27th to you uh, as we get it going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, and uh, that, that, that's it, man, Doc. I, I want to say thank you, man. I look forward to uh, always having this time, and thank you for reaching out uh, and, and just getting coming on, man, so we can just keep this thing going. Uh, keep everybody abreast and this season one. I mean, uh, the season opener. We're going to, we're going to yeah. put this out there, man. Man, I, I, I appreciate you. This is <coughs> year two that we've gotten a chance to sit down together. Yeah. And so I'm looking forward to year three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Well, I appreciate it, Doc. Uh, you have a good one. Uh, I know the work. Have a great Friday tomorrow. The work is about to slow down for you, at least for the weekend. Uh, I'll be out there in Franklin, and I'll enjoy it myself for you, man. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Doc. All right, y'all. We will be back. Y'all make sure that y'all keep it locked.